Unlike Megan McArdle sitting in uh, a Bloomberg office somewhere uh, churning out these horrible sociopath columns, the actual people who were victimized by this thing, they didn't want to hear from Theresa May. And this is, I mean, kind of stunning. She's actually at a parish for a hearing on this. Now, recall when the fire first happened, she went and visited and made sure to not meet with any of the victims. Security she, reasons. Yes, yeah, security reasons, apparently. Now, Jeremy Corbyn, of course, went and you know hugged people and actually listened to them. Uh, she went there and made sure that she didn't have to interact with any of the poors. Uh, but here she is because she had such a backlash from it. She went to a hearing at a parish mass and literally was driven out by a mob. This is about 18 seconds. And, you know, maybe a mob is actually an unfair word. She was driven out by people that didn't want to hear her bullshit. And she was scurried into a fleet of SUVs, Range Rovers, very fitting for a Tory head of state, fleeing the scene of victims angry that they didn't do uh, anything to protect them from a public uh, fire, which has now led to 79 people dying. <laughs> People are at their wit's end. I mean, that this is the consequence. Now, Jeremy Corbyn, who is going to become prime minister of the UK, and I cannot wait until he does, was on ITV News speaking with political editor Robert Preston. And he had, you know, people talk, and look, Bernie is a great, noble, democratic socialist, but... People talk, they, they throw that word, So people called Obamacare socialism. Here is a Western political leader. This is actual socialism right here. I don't think we've heard anything like this from a frontline politician in decades, or maybe ever. Every day at Heathrow, planes get delayed. Hundreds of people get stranded, airports all over the world. Hotels are found for them immediately, they're sorted out. 400 or so people. Still, most of them have not got somewhere decent or safe or secure to stay in. Somehow or other, it seems to be beyond the wit of the public services to deal with a you, crisis you, you, facing a relatively small number of people in a country of 65 million. Let's look at but, it but you, But you made, you made a, a statement that some people think was controversial, which is that the, the vacant properties mm. in the area should be appropriated. <laughs> How would that work in well, practice? I, I don't think it's very controversial at all. If I you think have, some thought it was controversial. Well, some people. I'm not. I'm not blaming you for that. Uh, <laughs> there are a large number of um, deliberately kept vacant flats and properties all over London. It's called land banking. People with a lot of money buy a house, buy a flat, keep it empty. But you would seize it forever, or just just take well, it for as long as they're needed. Compulsory. Well, I'm just looking at the mechanism. Occupy it, compulsory, purchase it, right. uh, requisition it. There's a lot of things you can do. But can't we, as a society, just think, all of us? It's all very well putting our arms around people during the crisis, but there is, homelessness is rising, the housing crisis is getting worse. And my point was quite a simple one. In an emergency, you have to bring all assets to the table in order to deal with that crisis, and that is what I think we should be doing in this but case. I think he's absolutely right, and I look forward to hearing more of that. Why should people sitting on real estate and rentierism be more important than the immediate social needs of people who've been dislodged by a catastrophe. The byproduct of which was tax and spending policies that benefited people sitting on unused real estate and punished people by leading to such low safety standards that they had a fire in a public building. I commend Jeremy Corbyn for that. And that is actual, as we say, that is actual socialism. Now, Yeah, and uh, two to one people support that, uh, uh, seizing land-banked right. properties to house people. Uh, it's not even close. They've done polling on that already. Right. And he's absolutely right. And I think the analogy with the airplanes is great. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.